Hello again, everyone. So today I decided to take out all of my fountain pens that I have not yet inked and to simply test them by dipping the nibs in ink and writing with them because I have noticed that I have a lot of fountain pens inked at any given time. And sometimes it's not too good to keep ink in pens for an indefinite length of time if you're not using them regularly. Um, and these, I didn't just want to dive right in and fill them up with ink and then have to clean them out if I don't want to use them. So this is going to be a new thing for me. I mean, I have tested out pens with just dipping them in ink before, but certainly not this many at once. And um, let's see how it works. And this way you'll be able to see a variety of pens too. And this is the comparison, or not necessarily comparison, but this is the video that I was promising showing some of the vintage pens that I had gotten from a variety of places. So um, I'll go through them as we go through the pens and test them. I have organized them now from least expensive to most expensive on the table. Um, and the vast majority of these are very affordable. I would say that once you get over here to these last three, we start getting in the $100 range and up, which is a little bit more expensive, but everything from here down is, you know, $50 and below. So it's all, they're all fairly reasonably priced pens. So let's see, I like I said, I will tell you what these are as I come to them in the list. I am going to put this whole stack off to the side. So we'll just focus on one at a time. And then I'm going to pick a new fairly clean page in my Tomoe River notebook. I have decided to use um, Pilot Yamabuto ink for this because I know that it is a very consistent ink. It's going to work in pretty much any pen I put it in. Um, and that way we can kind of get a comparison between different line widths and everything with the same ink, which I generally don't get because I generally put different ink in my pens, in my different pens rather. Okay, so let's go ahead and start. I'm gonna open up this ink. And essentially I'm gonna be using all of these pens like dip pens. Okay. So the first few pens, like I said, are gonna be very inexpensive pens. So don't expect super fancy. Let's see, I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit so you can see. So this first one is an Amazon fountain pen. So super exciting, right? But I got this actually at, at um, was it a buy sell trade group? I forget actually, I, I've purchased so many pens lately and sometimes I hit purchase and then forget that I buy them and especially when they're inexpensive like this. So this I purchase in the resale market just because it was no longer available from Amazon and I kind of wanted to try it. Again, you know, this is not a fancy pen, but I haven't inked it because I have so many other cheapy pens like this that I wanted to try. So let's go ahead and dip that in the ink and try it. So this is the, the Amazon Basics fountain pen. And it actually writes pretty well, I would say. This is a fine nib. Okay, and what I am gonna do, so I, off camera here, I have a little container of water, and so that this nib doesn't, um, the ink doesn't get stuck up in the nib. I am going to dip it in the water and then essentially flush it out on this paper towel like this. And it's always surprising how much ink ends up in the nib after you've just tested it like this. But it shouldn't get all through the, um, through the lower parts of the feed and all of that. So, and this is also so that when I do go to ink the pen, it's essentially like a clean new pen. Actually, I'm very surprised how much ink went in here. Maybe I shouldn't dip it down so low. Okay, because see, you're still seeing a little bit of ink. It's almost there though. This is just a very pigmented ink. So that's why you're gonna get ink for a little while in the pen there. And I might end up doing a little bit more of this off camera too, so that we can speed up the process a little bit. 
So the next one is the new Jinhao pen that I got that I wanted to compare to the other one that I have. So let's go ahead and see this one. This one doesn't feel as heavy as the other one. Okay, I'm just gonna dip it real quick. And this is the Jinhao, oh, which is very interesting. It writes much thinner than the other Jinhao. Um, I don't even know what this pen is called. Let's say abalone shell. Very interesting how that one writes. Because like I said, it is much thinner than the other Jinhao that I have. And perhaps that is what part, mm, is this a fine nib? Yeah, and the other one was too, which I didn't write. Let me go ahead and dip that back in and because the ink came off of this one faster. Oops. Fine nib. Maybe I didn't dip in as much the first time. Okay. And my water over here is turning a very bright shade of pink already from this ink. And this one seems to be cleaning out much faster. Like we're pretty much already at almost clear here with just a couple of dips in the water. Okay, so that one I don't need to clean again. And then this one is a vintage Moonman pen that I got off of eBay. And again, super duper cheap. These are just really cheap pens. It has a little hooded nib. Um, because it's so small, it is a mini pen. Uh, it'd be hard to write with this way, so I'm going to go ahead and post it. It actually feels quite good posted. And I'm trying to keep an eye on how far I dip the nib in. So this is a vintage Moon Man. And this one feels much scratchier than the other two. And I believe this is a fine nib. And I got that one because I was kind of thinking that I wanted to look into uh, mini pens. And yeah, given this test, I'm not sure I'm a fan of that nib. It's just kind of scratchy. Okay. Okay. And then I have two of these, which I purchased together off of Mar Mercari. They are um, Campo Marzio mini pens. And I had seen these around and was kind of curious about them. They're Italian, but again, you know, not high priced pens. So, oh, it actually feels quite nice. And the nib is actually an Iridium German nib but it doesn't say whether it's fine or medium. Yeah, that's actually quite nice. Let me see if the other one is of similar quality. Okay. And they're super cute. I was actually thinking of giving this one to someone I know that really likes purple. <laughs> okay, and that was probably a little bit too big of a dip. So this one was the, so I'm gonna, this is Campo, Campo Marzio. And this is the purple. And this is the, let's call it magenta. Yeah, these are quite nice. Oh, I was about to dip that back into the ink instead of the water. <laughs> and I dipped that one in a little deep, I think, so I'm probably going to have to clean that one again, too. Okay, so the next one here is this Pilot Double Broad that is, I believe, a 78G. This is the vintage pen that I purchased off of Peyton Street Pens. And it's super light. Um, is this the one? Yeah, so this is the one that has the little sack filling thing here, which I'm thinking of replacing. 
So let's go ahead and give it a dip and see how it goes. Okay, so this is, oh, that's kind of interesting. It, it does write like a stub. So this is the 78G, but it's supposedly a double broad. Yeah, I like that actually. It's yeah, it has a nice feel. It doesn't have any tipping material on the nib, which is why I um, kind of think it's more like a stub nib. And tipping material. So if you'll see, if you look here, I don't know if you can see that. The nib looks pretty much completely flat. Like there's no little bulb on the end. And usually the bulb at the end is called tipping material. So usually on, um, on some italic stubs, there is no tipping material. I'm not really sure, I'm not experienced enough to know which category fits into what for the non-tipping material, but um, most fountain pens other than stubs have tipping material, which kind of makes the, the pen, the, it actually dictates, you know, what, what your line quality is going to be. Okay. And so this is a vintage Esterbrook that I purchased off of a secondhand site. And this is a fine nib. And I don't really know much about this pen. It looks like you cannot open this bottom part or it's just super, super tight on. Um, and it has this little, it has this little, I don't know, lever, lever filling mechanism here. And I haven't filled it yet, but I did want to try it out and see what the nib is like. So this is a, ooh, that is actually quite nice. And it has some, it has some flex. That's actually probably gonna require a little bit of learning to get to learn how to write that. It feels slightly scratchy, but I think that that is just because, um, because it is so soft that I tend to um, push it a little bit more into the paper. So I think I could probably have a lighter touch with it and have less scratchiness. Yes, that's actually very surprising. I like that one a lot. And it's a little darker here. I think we might be seeing some of the original ink that was in this coming through because I have not cleaned this. Yes, there was clearly some blue ink in here, um, but it was sold as a working pen and that the mechanism worked. So yeah, there's clearly, there's clearly some blue ink in that pen <laughs> bleeding through. So what I'll do is I'll clean that out before I fill it. Okay, and then this pen is uh, a vintage Waterman. I don't know the style. Uh, let's see if it says, it just says Waterman made in France. That's all it says on the cap there. Them tiny, tiny little letters across the bottom here. And this was also off of a secondhand site and I have not cleaned this one. So I suspect that there is, oops, that there is ink in here. So it snaps on the back there. And this is sort of like a little thin ladylike pen. <laughs> um, this did come with cartridges, but I have replaced it with a Waterman, um, uh, cartridge here. Let's see. And I just got the cartridge off of uh, Amazon. I'm going to dip that in. So this is a vintage. That feels really nice. I'm sorry, converter, not cartridge. Uh, Waterman. Yeah, there's definitely some blue ink in here too. It is a, I think it's, oh, it's an 18 karat nib. Nib in, let's see. Oh, it doesn't, mm, let's see. I don't see what. That is actually really, really nice. <laughs> some of the blue ink is starting to come flowing out clearly. And that is really beautiful. And 
with these pens, this one needs to be cleaned for clearly, and that is my intent to clean these before I fill them with ink. But um, I've just been kind of getting random pens that I see for a really good deal. This one I think I got for $30. So I thought that that was a pretty good deal for an 18 karat nib for a vintage Waterman and it's sort of got this tortoise shell thing here. Um, you know, when you buy things like that though, it's kind of a mixed bag because you never know. Sometimes they, they aren't tested, you don't know if they're gonna work. But that one's actually really nice. So let's see. Okay, so this is the sketch pen that I purchased from Jerry's Artorama, and this is made by Gold Rit or Golden Rit. Golden Rit. Um, I'm gonna try it without the back because it feels a little heavy with that. So let me go ahead and dip that in. So this is the. Oh, feels nice. Golden Rit sketch pen. That, that actually feels really nice. Um, and the nib itself, oh my goodness, it's hard to see, but it's a titanium nib. Yeah, that actually, it's, it's a little thicker, I would think, than probably um, some other pens that I would sketch with because I, I generally sketch with thinner pens, but that actually feels really nice. So I'm just gonna give it a quick dip and then I'll do more of that after I finish filming here. And then I was going to try out the medium nib on my Twisby Vac Mini. So I really prefer the feel of the mini pens because when they're posted they feel they feel like they're the right balance for me. So let's see. This is the, oh, of course. <laughs> Twisby back mini. And of course this nib is perfect and lovely. This is a medium nib. Yeah, it's starting to run out of ink there, but that is lovely, no issues there. Not that I thought there would be any. And let's see. This one seemed to clean out really quick, so I think that I can just put that aside after rinsing it out here. Okay. So this next pen is a uh, Franklin Kristoff, and I purchased this off a buy sell trade group on Facebook. And I had been wanting to try a Franklin Kristoff for quite some time. I um, I just didn't see one that really appealed to me. I mean, it's not like they're in short supply, but it's an American maker, and they kind of make small batch pens. Um, this is resin, obviously, and. Um, it's kind of a pocket pen. It's not their smallest pen, but it is it is sort of pocket size. It posts very nicely, feels very secure, and um, it just feels really good in the hand. And this is a fine nib, so let's see. So, move that up. So this is the Franklin, oops. Oh, let's try that again. Franklin Kristoff, very nice. Yeah, I like the feel of that nib. I think if I were to get another one, I might get a medium just because this is a little finer than I would normally use. And so when I was using that just now, it felt a little like I had a little bit of feedback, um, which is fine. I mean, that that is obviously the, the feel of the nib. It's not anything wrong with the nib. And I have recently discovered um, 
noticed that some pens can have a pencil-like feedback, and I would say that this probably has a little bit of that pencil-like feedback going on. Um, I'm okay with it. Uh, the other pen that I have that has that same thing, actually more pronounced, is the Narwhal pen that I have. It has more pencil-like feedback, as they call it. Okay, so I have two more pens, so we're getting up to the more expensive pens, although this one is a uh, cheaper Pelican. This one I did an unboxing on the channel fairly recently. So this is a steel nib, but it's supposed to have a little bit of flex, and it, I did get the extra fine just because I know that the Pelicans write a little bit more broad in their nibs. So let's see. So this is the... This is the pellet. Oh, oh, oh. I'm gonna put it in there. It didn't. Let's see. There we go. So, oh yes, very nice. And it does have a little bit of flex. The Pelican Iconic Blue with an extra fine nib. Oh, that's lovely. That's lovely. I think, yeah. So still a fan, still a fan of Pelican. <laughs> it's kind of, it's kind of dangerous. Oh, I just remembered. I didn't put another Pelican in here that I recently got. Um, let me get that out real quick. Let's see, where's that pen case? It's right here to my, to my right. So this is another, um, Pelican that I got in the secondhand market and it is vintage although it's probably not a very old vintage and looking up the um, styling and the fact that this is black beneath the Pelican here I think it's probably around the 80s or 90s early 90s but this I got for a steal like I don't even want to tell you how how little I paid for this and I was like super stoked I can't believe I forgot about it in this thing but it's a medium nib so I was like, hmm, okay, well, you know, given the price, I'm totally gonna go for it. And this one does not have as much, this nib does not have as much tipping material as the other pen, as um, my extra fine Pelican that has essentially a similar nib in the, um, it's the M400. It, that has more tipping material as an extra fine. This is a medium and it doesn't have as much tipping material, but let's go ahead and try writing with it. Oh, again, I think I dipped that a little far. So this is the, this is another M400 Pelican, and it doesn't have as much flex as the extra fine. M400 medium nib. It's actually lovely. Oh my goodness. It is very lovely. And basically someone had gotten this as a gift and had never used it and um, just sold it because they weren't using it. I was very happy to get it. Okay, and again with that one, I'm gonna clean that off more. So that one's lovely. And that'll be kind of nice because it's almost like a bold nib with how thick that is. Okay, so this is the final pen, I promise. It's turned into a longer video, but you can fast forward through what, whichever parts you don't want to see. Um, so this is the Sailor uh, pen that I got recently with the Zoom nib. So this is, they called it the Sailor Prophet. Okay, so I'm very excited about that one. So let's go ahead and try that out. So this is the, oh my goodness, that is juicy. Sailor Profit. Let's see if I write higher. And the zoom nib. So let's see. So if I go down here, just a little bit higher, a little bit higher, a little bit higher. Oh, that's really cool. It would be hard. <laughs> yeah, I'm totally like faltering here and it would be really hard to make <laughs> little squiggles with varying lines and I'm clearly not experienced at that with um, lifting up and down the angle but I really like I really like the 
the bold line that is just at my normal writing angle. Oh, and let me try on the back. Reverse writing. Oh, you can get really small and it actually, it's a little scratchier, but you could totally write. But yeah, I actually really like that. Okay, so that's all fun stuff. <laughs> but I hope you found that useful. And this was really just to try out a variety of pens that I had laying around that I didn't want to fully ink at least not yet, and it would kind of determine which ones I would want to fully ink. And I'm pretty happy with all of these pens. I think the only one that I might consider uh, getting rid of is this little Moon Man pen. Just because, and, and there's nothing wrong with it, it's just, it's just way too fine for my liking, I think. So I may end up putting that in the for sale pile, <laughs> or to, the to sell pile. So, um, there we go. I'm going to pull out all these pens again, and now they're in mostly reverse order. I took out that one. But that for me was a very fun experiment, and I was really it was really interesting to see all the different qualities and all the different line widths and and all the different, and feel all the different types of feedback from all of these different pens, right one right after another with the same ink. So I would say the highlights, uh, definitely the Zoom nib. I'm super excited about that, that's awesome. Um, and the Pelican M400, you know, but that's, that's kind of a given. I really like the cheaper Pelican, the Iconic Blue. Um, and I really like this vintage Waterman. So those were probably the highlights for me out of this. Biggest surprises, I would say, are probably these little Campo Marzio pens. They're they're really quite nice in writing. Um, but each of these pens has its own qualities that are good. Um, I'll, tr I'll probably have to play around a little bit more with the Jin, Jin Hao abalone shell pen just to see and compare it with the other one that I have. Um, but yeah, all of these are lovely and I'm looking forward to writing with all of them more, except for maybe that one, the one Moon Man pen, <laughs> but that's not bad. And this was super cheap. So it's not, it's not a huge loss if I end up not liking it. All right. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed. Sorry, this was a little longer than normal, but, um, once I get going with fountain pens and start playing around, I kind of get lost in it. So that was lots of fun for me and I hope it was for you too. All right, feel free to like and or subscribe and I'll see you next time. Thanks so much. Bye.